Karen. In this video, I'm going to show you how I retrieve this file from Creative Fabrica, put it into Design Space, make some adjustments, remove the text that you see at the bottom here, and then separate this out into different cut colors that I'm going to cut with the glitter vinyl that I received in my mystery box. So when you click the Creative Fabrica link on my blog post, it will bring you to this screen. All you need to do is click download. That will allow you to save it to your computer. And you can see that it's a zipped file because it has a zip extension here. I'm going to put this into my video folder for this video. So it's easy for me to find when I'm working on it. And then I'm going to click save. Once that's done, I have a link down here that will automatically unzip my file. Now this is how it works on a Mac. I don't know if it's exactly the same on a PC. And you'll see that it has created a folder for my file and I have all the different file types in here. And for my project I'm going to be using this SVG file. And you can tell it's an SVG file because of the SVG extension. So I'm just going to close this now. Now we're in Design Space. I'm going to click the Upload button to upload my image. Then I'm going to click the Upload Image button. I'm going to click the Browse button. Then I'm going to go looking for my file. Now it knows that it's here because this is where I was looking earlier. But just in case, I'm going to click the folder I put it into, subfolders until I find where it is. And this is the folder that was created for me when it was unzipped. And here's my SVG file. I click on it. Then I click Open and that brings it into Design Space for me. Since it's an SVG file, I have nothing else to do with it. It's already all cleaned up for me. I can leave the name as it is, which was the folder name, the file name, and I can add tags, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to create Crafty and then Sparkle, and I'm also going to add Glitter, so that if I search for those later on, it'll be easy for me to find. I'm going to click the Save button. Now that it's here, I can click it to select it. You can see that there's a, an icon to represent the file here. And I'm just going to click Insert Images. It's going to put it on my canvas and I'll be able to work with it. Okay, so now you see, here's my file. For right now, I'm going to make this larger so it's going to be easier for you to see to work with. You're going to see a couple of things in here. One is that these are not properly joined. You can see those lines in there. And if you leave this the way it is, it's going to cut into the next letter. Wherever you see a line, that's where it's going to cut. So I'm going to select my image. I'm going to ungroup it. And now I'll be able to take this section over here. When I click it, you see that all this text is one section. And I'm going to click the red X button to delete it. I also don't want all of these teardrops. I want the stars, but not all of those teardrops. So you see that it says selecting all of the stars together. I want to move these a little bit closer to the text over here. So I'm going to ungroup this, and this is only ungrouping the stars. You can see the group over here. It's all the stars that are together. So when I click ungroup, I can now move these stars individually closer to the rest of my text. I'll put that over there. Now I'm going to choose this word and I need to weld all of this together to make sure that those letters don't cut into each other. So I've right clicked and I'm choosing weld. Now you see how that has fixed these letters except that it created a problem over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that I'm going to ungroup it again, and I have a feeling it's because there may have been separate groups. Okay, so now I'm going to take all of these letters and I'm going to select them one by one. I'm clicking, then I'm holding down the shift key. I'm clicking the next one, 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 and the next one until I have all those letters selected. Then I'm going to right click and choose group so that I know those are all grouped together. Then I'm going to right click and choose weld. And that still hasn't worked properly. So I'm going to undo that. 
I'm going to undo the grouping. And I'm going to try welding them one, two together at a time. That doesn't want to work. So this has something to do with how the file was created. And you see how that has already cut into there. And that's where the problem is. So I need to find a way to solve that problem. I think it's because there's an extra piece here. So let me try welding these two together. Sometimes you need to do a little bit of investigative work to find the answer to your problem. And that's still a problem. So let me see here. Okay, so I'm going to undo that again. I'll take this one away, which we don't need. But I'm going to take the E, no, I'm going to choose this little piece here, and then the E, and I'm going to weld those together and see what happens. That works. So then I'm going to take this little piece here and the L, and I'm going to weld those together. That works. Now I think those were the only problems. So I'm going to go back and do what I did earlier, select all of these pieces, and I'm not going to bother grouping them. I'm just going to try welding them together. There's still some problems here. So I'm going to go back and do those individually. Undo. And again, I'm going to take this piece here and this one. Now you don't have to do this all the time, but there are going to be occasions when files were created by someone else. You don't know what they've done. So this is just a way to solve the problem in case you have run into this type of thing. Most of the time you won't have to do this. Just trying to select those two together and then I'm welding. And then there's another piece over here and the P select those and weld those. So now all of those look fine. I'm going to select those letters because I do want them all welded together. Because remember, wherever you have a line, that's where it's going to cut. And I don't want that. I want it to be one piece all together. So I have all my letters selected. Now it's going to work fine. Now I think there are some background pieces there. Those are the pieces that were causing the problem. So I'm just going to come in here, select all of those and delete them. And then I'm going to move my word sparkle back where I want it. This isn't necessarily exactly where it was, but that's fine. The word sparkle is going to be in the glitter multi pink. The words crafty girls always is going to be in the lilac iron on light. The stars are going to be in the glitter lavender product. So I'm going to change my colors so that it's easy for me to remember that. To change the color, I'm going to select that item and I'm going to click the color over here in the layers panel and I'm going to make that a gray color. When you want to be able to group something together so that you're able to change the color of everything in one shot, what you need to do is select what you want to group that way, right click and weld, then go up into your colors Here's the weld result. Click on the color and then choose the color that you want to change that to. So we have some problems here with the way always is done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this and I'm just going to type my own word. I'm going to take away that and I'm going to delete the word always. I'm going to write some text myself. And I want to choose something that will work with this. So I'm going to go into my fonts and find something a little bit quirky. Here's one that's going to work. Could make that just a little bit bigger. Okay, so now I'm going to choose the words crafty girls, the word always, I'm going to weld those, come up to my weld result and change the color of those. 
going to move the word sparkle out of the way for now, as well as this. And I'm going to choose all of the stars. I'm going to weld those together. Oops, they weren't selected. Let's see again. I don't think this bottom one is selected, so I'm going to do that again. Go further down a bit. Then I'm going to right click and weld. And these are going to be that darker purple. So here's my weld result. And I'm going to make it a darker purple. And that's going to be the glitter lavender. Now I'm going to move my text back into position, as well as the word sparkle. It may not be exactly as it was, but it works. So now when I cut out my design, it's going to cut out in three different colors, and I'm going to be able to put those pieces together. And this is a kind of a design where it doesn't matter how they line up exactly. You can work it out once you're applying the iron on, and it will be fine. So before I go any further, I'm going to save my file. I'm going to call it Crafty Girls Glitter Project. Now I know that everything is saved. Now the only thing is I'm going to group everything together. My All my color work is done so I can group these together. I want to resize everything so that it will fit on my apron. So you can see my apron here. I'm just going to measure across. So I want my design to fit in seven inches wide here and the height doesn't matter. So I'm just concerned about the seven inches wide. Now that I know the size I need for my design, I have everything selected here and I'm going to come up to the dimensions and I'm going to change the width to seven. The program will automatically adjust the height for me as long as this lock is in place. When I press enter, it will resize it for me. Now that everything is resized and in the correct colors, I can make it. So I'm going to click the Make It button. The system sorts everything into the right colors on the mats. I need to go in and choose Mirror because I'm cutting out iron on, and that needs to be mirrored. Then when I place the material down on the mat, it's going to be the shiny side down, and I'm going to cut into the rubbery side in a mirrored image. So as I was saying here in the software, I have my gray mat. I'm going to click continue. It's going to ask me to select my Cricut device, which is my maker. So now I have a bunch of choices for iron on materials, but you don't see the iron on glitter here. So I'm going to choose view all and I'm going to type in glitter to make it faster to find it. And I'll click the search icon. So you don't want glitter cardstock and you don't want glitter vinyl. Glitter vinyl is the thinner adhesive vinyl. What you want is the glitter iron on. I'll choose that and I'll click done. And it's telling me that I need to have my regular tool, my regular blade and mat loaded. And it shows that that's already done. I'm using the default pressure. It reminds you to turn on mirroring. So that's all done. I'm just going to go and press go on the machine. Now I have the lavender mat displayed, so this is my foil iron-on. So I'm putting that on my mat, and then I need to change my material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap, click Cancel. I'm going to click Make it again. I'm going to go down to this lavender mat. I'm going to click Continue. You can see here that mirror is off, so I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to choose View All, and I'm going to search for Foil. So I'm using the Foil Iron-On, which is this product right here. I'll choose that, click Done, and then I'll go place this in my machine.
Okay, so my last mat is going to be for some more glitter product. So I'm going to go through those same steps again. I'm going to cancel my cut here. I'm going to click make it again. I'm going to scroll down and choose my third mat. I need to mirror. Click continue. And it's asking me to select a device because I have two machines. So I'm choosing my maker. Again, I need to choose view all and search for glitter. And you choose the glitter iron on. If you're working with an explorer, you turn your dial to custom and you choose from that screen. So this is ready. I'll put it on my mat and cut it out. Now that I've finished cutting everything out on the maker, I'm going to weed my vial. So here's my first piece. And actually this piece is going to be the most difficult to see from the back. See where my stars are. So I'm going to start with this one. It's going to be a fair amount of waste on this. going to trim this where there's no design. That be good. And then this will be good for a future project. So my furthest star ends over here. I'm going to cut this away because you can use all these bits of vinyl later on. There's quite a bit in here that I could use. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and cut away in the middle so that I don't waste all of that. I'll keep the pieces with my stars intact. So that everything is placed the way it should be, but I have this piece that's left over. So to weed away the excess material, just start in a corner and start pulling away and you'll see that it leaves the stars behind. Stars are weeded. My word sparkle done, and I can look at it on the, the right way so that I can see that the word is weeded properly. I'm going to get my easy press and get that all set up. I need to use a setting of 270 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 seconds. So I'm going to increase my temperature to 270, let that heat up, and I'm going to change my timer to 40 seconds. So in the meantime, my press is heating up. Once it's ready, it will beep. So that sound means that my easy press is ready and you can see that there's a green light on it. I'm just going to move it out of the way. I'm going to place my apron down on my towel. And I'm going to use the easy press to heat this surface and make it nice and flat. It also gets rid of any humidity in my fabric. See, it's nice and flat. I'm 
And now I'm going to take my design and I'm going to set it up just to make sure that I can see how I want it. And then I'll do the different parts. So crafty girls always sparkle. And then my stars go around that, except that it's a little bit too far. And you see the way it was set up was that this was closer to here. And then my stars go around like this. So that looks good. So I'm going to get started with crafty girls. Line it up, and I'm just lining it up to be straight to the eye. I'm not, I want to watch those seams, so I'm just holding it there. Press the Cricut logo, and I'll let it continue that whole time. And I'll just hold it in place. And I'm really not applying any pressure at all. I'm just holding it in place. And that's done. So I should be able to pull, peel this away. I'm just checking something. I think it's operator error. I think it needs to be lifted cold. There we go. Shouldn't have been hot. Okay. Next I'm going to do the sparkle. And luckily the foil and the glitter iron-on use the same settings with the heat with the easy press so i'm going to place my press on that and just make sure that i'm not on any of the stitching and i'm going to press the c And now I'm going to apply my stars. I put my parchment paper over the rest of it so I don't damage it. And it's going to be for 40 seconds again. stars. Continuing on with my theme of showing you what I do when I make mistakes. <laughs> I'm sure you noticed that when I put on Crafty Girls Always I had some trouble with the foil iron on and you can see here that the A is scrunched up. Some of the letters are a little bit scrunched up and there's some wrinkles in the foil so that's not going to look very nice. So I need to take this off. I'm going to recut and I'm going to reapply just that section do it exactly the same way I did, and I'll show you my results. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 100% pure acetone and some um, Q-tips. I'm going to put my craft mat on here so that nothing happens to my cutting mat. I'm going to work from the front of this first. I'm just going to pour a bit of the acetone into the cap. And I'll dip my Q-tip into it. I'm applying it all the way around the HTV. That softens it up. I'm going to move on to the next letter. And I guess I'll do maybe three letters at a time. Let that soak in a little bit. And then I can start to lift it. So I'm just going to use my pick. And you can see it's already getting softer so that I'll be able to lift it away. And so then I'll just continue with this and as you see as I scrape over the area with my pick it's coming loose. I've loosened it with the acetone, I've loosened the adhesive and now it's coming away fine. And you see that all of this section is already gone. Okay so this is ready now. I'm going to place my text in the same spot and you can see there's a little bit of a shadow of the purple here so I'm just going to make sure that my C is over that spot everything's in the right places it's nice and straight 
Uh, the one thing I didn't do was pre-press this. I'm just going to place my mat over this so that I can pre-press this area. Make sure it's good and dry and flat. And my press is already heated up to 270 for 40 seconds. And I'm going to place my text on there. So that it's lined up where it was before. And then I'll place my press there and press the Cricut button for it to count down. So that's all set. Turn off my press and I'm going to wait until this cools. And look at that, how well it works when you do it properly. Ta-da! Now I'm really happy with my apron. Yeah, that's okay. Notice how you can see the texture of the canvas through the iron-on. You don't see that in the glitter because it's glitter, but you can see it here in the foil. That's how you know it's really adhered properly. So hope this has all been helpful to you. Thanks so much for watching.